Hey everyone, welcome back to the Film Fund Podcast. I'm your host, founder, and executive producer at the Film Fund, Thomas Verity. I'm also an award-winning filmmaker, producer, and film festival judge. I started the Film Fund to give artists and filmmakers an easier, alternative way to get their film funded. Instead of working on a screenplay, crowdfunding campaign, or grant application, you write one sentence pitching your film for a chance to receive up to $10,000 and other prizes to make it. Our winter 2021 narrative and documentary contests are now open, so check us out at thefilmfund.co to enter your one sentence pitch for a chance to receive up to $10,000 and other prizes to make your film. That includes kit split gift cards, Adobe Creative Cloud subscriptions, and maybe we'll even throw some sponsors in there if I can get some emails and phone calls out and wrangle them up. Um, we've had things like post-production prizes um, and some equipment rental packages as well from rental houses so stay tuned and check out our email list for the most up-to-date information on all the prizes so want to remind you that contests do happen regularly so if you are listening at a later date check the website at thefilmfund.co for the most up-to-date information today we have brandon harrison one of our amazing film fund judges brandon's a producer writer and programmer he's a feature documentary programmer at the brooklyn film festival served on the review committee for ifp as well as tribeca's pilot season and has produced multimedia content for a variety of other outlets including players tribune vanity fair and slam magazine he's a graduate of morehouse college and received his ma in cinema from ucla which i hear is a pretty good school so, Brandon, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're so glad to have you on the judging panel. It's been an awesome experience. Um, I was wondering if you could bri- yeah, provide a little background yourself as well. Well, you know, UCLA is a, it's a great school, they say. <laughs> Some people say, no, it was, it's a good experience. I mean, all jokes aside. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've been on a journey, man. I've always loved film since I was trying to make uh, – can I – how do I have to be my polite language? I almost I didn't want to swear. No, you can swear. <laughs> there's a little when I upload it. There's a little um like checkbox where you can check if it's explicit or not. So if somebody oh, says okay. the f word or something, we just check that little box. No, and it's I just, all good. I was just gonna say that uh, you know, growing up, I was making my my shitty little films. Okay. I was trying to make with my camera. Mm-hmm. I went to film school. I mean, undergrad. We didn't really have much of that, but I uh, went. I did a program actually at UCLA. It was supposedly like, a, you know, a undergrad program where you would go out there for the summer and meet with the grad programs and stuff. Mm. And I uh, did a project, a film project, because I didn't want to, I was an English major, so I didn't want to read another book. Oh, I was an English major, too. I'm going to do it. I was going to do something <laughs> about film because <laughs> I was being lazy. Yeah. And uh, they liked it. And I met with, a, you know, a whole bunch of uh, the staff and the committee over there before I even got a chance to go. So. So I ended up there, and I did grad school, and realized I hated it, and was just trying to find my way in mm. you know, the, the industry, man. So I, I feel like I've done pr- I've pretty much every side of filmmaking in some extent, mm. at some part or another, because I, like, from grad school, like, I interned at Overbrook Entertainment with, with Will Smith. That oh, wow. wild. And, yeah. And then, like, I did that, and then simultaneously I was teaching film, and then I got a gig out of grad school, I was teaching film in Miami, um, and then I had, uh, in that experience, I had deaf students, so I oh, started wow. to like, do all my own captioning and crap like that for mm-hmm. them, and that took me to doing, I was doing uh, a lot of uh, audio description work and stuff like that, to the point where like, I'm all over Netflix, if you, hear me, if you go to audio description <laughs> really? option. That's crazy. Where, yeah, I've like, done tons oh, wow. of those. That's a funny um, way to get into it. Uh, so how did you get into yeah, captioning? I, just, oh, I, I had these deaf students. I just, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, it's funny because uh, like I was like, I don't want to type this much, but that's how I got doing the, the audio mm. for for the blind actually. So, but yeah, man, I like I've just done a ton of different stuff, and now programming for a number of festivals: Brooklyn, Back in YC, Tribeca. I'm um, actually uh, just recently started at Nashville as well. So did I forget to name that. drop Tribeca in the the beginning? No, I oh think I did say that, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I put that. Yeah, Tribeca. Um, but this year, you know, like in the intro, there it's a little. I had updated, but uh, pilot season, uh, it's a little shifted, a little different this year. So it's just a lot of cool original online stuff mm. work uh, now. So that's great. 
feel like I'm rambling. So <laughs> I, I mean, I I feel like that's what a podcast is. You ramble about stuff for uh, a half hour, hour or so. Uh, well, that's all awesome. Um, just listening to your background about film school, did you get – was that a production degree or was it more of a cinema studies degree? No, it was a studies degree, which is a funny thing because – if we're trying to, I don't know, school people a little bit about how this stuff works. I mm-hmm. didn't know what I was doing, and I kind of had an inkling that I didn't want to do studies, but I didn't mm-hmm. know anything about school or what I was supposed to do next. So I was like, I'm going to go to grad school because people do that, right? Whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, when I did that, I applied to like all of the big grad schools in film. So like, I applied to NYU, I applied to SC, and I applied to UCLA. And the reason, and I ended up getting it reason i went to ucla one is because i had been there but also because theoretically cheaper but mm-hmm. they i was like i don't know if i want to you know what read about books or film like mm-hmm. i want to have some practical knowledge and usc said you could do that as well but it was also very tracked like if you're going to be a producer you have to be a producer right. you, know, you have to be a director you have to be a screenwriter and ucla was like listen i know this is a studies degree but you can basically take other courses you want to take I see. you can do film making directing you can do producing you can do screenwriting so i just mm-hmm. took all those courses more that flexible i could um so i didn't have to just read about you know foucault and what that was great. right right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um how has that i guess educational background has that impacted your journey on becoming a festival programmer or how did you fall into that uh, I mean, that's, that's another, you know, I fill in a lot of things, but I, uh, I wasn't in Los Angeles for a while and I was like, I'm like, I'm in New York, um, you know, family's out here, blah, blah, blah. And I was just looking for things to do. I was like, hey, I can help screen. And this is what happens to a lot of people. You know, if you are interested in that, you can help screen. If you get paid to help screen, that's even better. <laughs> um, but I, uh, Brooklyn was looking for help and they had a big changeover and they're like, well, you know, you have master like a master of film like do you just want to program instead of screening it and i was like sure mm. so i started doing that started doing shorts first then doing the features and it's been great that's awesome um so you are the you're mostly the programmer for documentaries at brooklyn film festival right yeah primarily you, a feature doc could you talk to me a little bit about the difference between documentary filmmaking and narrative filmmaking i mean i know they're so different i'm not a documentary uh, filmmaker but um well i mean i think it depends on what because story is the primary thing in any project mm-hmm. but if you're making a film you what your expectations are for the the final piece or the final project is, is just like as a documentarian you don't really know that and as a mm. you know narrative filmmaker a lot of that is what you've planned you have a script you have a number of people you hopefully hired that are they're going to be there for this many days you have to get this shot shoot done in this amount of time and then mm-hmm. we have a schedule for our editing and these things can drag but you obviously you have more of a concrete control over the projects you're trying to make the vision the actors all this um, so it could be, you know, a lot more taxing on you and might require a lot more, um, a lot more extensive leadership in the ways of collaboration. Mm-hmm. While a documentary project could be, it's really a, a uh, not just, it, it, both pro- processes require a certain level of, you know, auteur energy. You know, it's going to take mm-hmm. one person's juice to really make it finish. And, and complete the work but in a documentary field that's a lot more real because the probability that people believe in it is a lot lower <laughs> and even if it and this is you know coming out a lower level you know you, you're getting paid by netflix to to talk to i don't know obama yeah there's going to be a lot of juice behind you but sure. if you just have a great story and you're making a film then it's going to require really your own personal gumption and energy you have somebody who's made a couple of docs myself like it you know, that process is just different. And in terms of story, you just don't know. You might think you know where it's going to go, but you, you, you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely a good point. Um, I guess it's more open-ended because you're chronicling something 
I mean, it would depend on the doc, but like, let's say you're chronicling something present in real time. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't really know where the story is going to go or you could uncover something. Um, talking out of my ass a little bit. I've never <laughs> done a documentary before, but um, I've watched a bunch. So there's that. But um, yeah, I mean, it's you mentioned something really interesting too. Um, comparing documentaries and narratives, I mean, they're both about story. They both have story, obviously. I, I think a lot of people grow up, myself included, thinking like, oh, a documentary that's like, the classroom and it's this boring history lesson um you know but then you get a little bit more wisdom you get exposed to some really cool docs you know like there's uh i think i forget the exact title of it dogtown and z boys is like one of my favorite documentaries of all yeah, time it's, it's it's a, skateboard parks right yeah yeah and it's just like the early years of that yeah if if that was the documentary they showed me in third grade instead of like you know the revolutionary war maybe i wouldn't be like oh docs but um I think it's so. Oh man, I love it, war docs. I'm I mean, I do Ken too. Burns now guy. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I kid, like right? them now too, but like you know, um, I don't know. I just have an image in my head of like documentaries and them being some. Some people think maybe they're boring and they're not because they're all yeah. about. It all depends on the story that you're telling, and you can make anything um, interesting and captivating yeah, look, depending look on what that story year, is. Man. Tiger, Tiger King is the biggest. I know. Media thing I know, year, and right? we get amazing doc entries as well through the film fund and it's always it's like wow these are super interesting um and it's people getting to the root of the story i think is what's really important there um speaking about film fund entries um do you have any memorable contest entries from the film fund oh wow man yeah you couldn't on the spot with that one i, <laughs> I wish i could give you <laughs> yeah. because there's so many man you i know, know. It's, like, oh, it's so wow. difficult too it'd so be, that's okay be great though you know the next um cycle to just see I would love to see like what people like uh, yeah mm -hmm. we'll always uh for the listeners out there we will we release the winning sentences after the films are produced and released on our website so you'll be able to see them as well once we do get around to publishing them and everything with covid settles down and people can shoot their shit um right. so about about um entries related question what do you look for in a good entry and a good pitch well this is funny because you know this is this is too pronged answer because it has to be succinct in a way that explains everything that you have but mm -hmm. also you know i mean when you're working on a narrative people talk about log lines and putting everything in there like that but that exists for the doc world too mm -hmm. give me a good subject give me a good scenario if you have access to something interesting tell me who it is don't be coy and say mm -hmm. well, we have you know a big figure to say who it is tell me like yeah tell me everything that you would need to know mm -hmm. let me know what you actually need to make this film like yeah be clear in a way that's not like oh well, we need all these things like if you're if you're super in the beginning stages it lets me know that you're just like you're just shooting your shot which is fine shoot mm -hmm. it. shoot your shot but it's like there's other people that are more prepared more thoughtful and yep that happens in every single thing you do and if you really feel like you're just shooting one out for the win, you know, then don't have expectations. But mm. the more energy you put into it in a way and thoughtfulness you put into it, you can, you know, zone in on all the important points people want to see. So story is the story there. Like you can craft the story and what we can expect in one sentence. The plot, the characters, the access, um, and what you need and what where you are in your production so those are things i would look for and can yeah. i can i just say a random aside this is a general yeah, aside sure. and i'm and this is a little i don't want to call it i mean it's a, it's a little harsh but i watch so much shit over the course of a year right and i don't say that to say this is a bad thing but people just submit stuff and mm -hmm. you just see things and you're like in the film festival if, programming you mean in the in the world you know mm -hmm. particularly the film festival programming world and people are, let's say, this year's 2021, how many COVID-related documentaries do you think <laughs> <laughs> that people have made? Oh, my gosh. And so when you're like, you know, I don't know, you're about to submit a COVID documentary about two people who are dealing with COVID uh, boredom and quarantine and how they coped with it, really consider how different or unique or... Mm -hmm. Do you have a particular angle? What makes a story engaging? Yep. Why is it worth being told? Because there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those, and there's some of them aren't even in quality. Mm -hmm. So just know that it, don't throw your you know 
your drop of water in the sea, especially if, if you don't feel like it's something that you're proud of. You're interested in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it's definitely important to make things, especially if you can make things over quarantine, but if you're really nailing down a festival strategy and you really think you want to do something with this project, I mean, don't just like spray yeah, it and pray. It could be for fun. You want to make stuff, make stuff, yeah. but you know. It's important to <laughs> that creative mu muscle, but um, you know, it, there's going to be a lot of COVID stories for sure. Um, but what I, what I don't do like... Don't foist it on. Don't foist your muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't want to watch anything COVID related for a very long time. Um, one thing you said was the log line and really narrowing down what your project's about and, you know, the premise and the conflict and what you need. And that's why I like the one sentence concept so much because it, it really forces you to do that. Um, and I've talked to... Yeah a lot of our winners too. And they said, you know, that was like, e even non-winners have talked to people who've entered and whether they're finalists or just people in the community who have entered and their, their project didn't get picked. Um, and we still keep in touch with everyone on the discord server. They say, I love the exercise of having to pitch my story and what I need to make this happen in one sentence. It was, it was really hard. Like it sounds easy. And yeah, we say you can enter in seconds, but to really craft a good sentence, really makes you think like what is my project about what is the story about that's so compelling like i mean that's in, a, in an old axiom right what's that yeah that's an old axiom you know about you know restrictions creating exactly real art or whatever yeah we'll butcher it i don't know the exact uh <laughs> saying but uh, i know what you're talking about um yeah and it's just it's such a great exercise to try to fit that all into one sentence and it goes back to the covid example you were talking about if like you were just kind of off the cuff there but say that was a project you were pitching to me like two people in quarantine are bored and they're dealing with the pandemic we're not gonna fund that like that's not there's right. nothing compelling there but i'm not gonna make up something for some reason the word unicorn popped in my head and i was gonna say like two <laughs> two covid people discover a unicorn but i don't know something there has to be something interesting and something compelling there in that one sentence and i think actually writing it down you could have an amazing script but and that could be a COVID script and it could be great but if you don't extract what is actually unique and compelling from yeah, that what's script the kernel of the story it into the sentence as it... a kernel yeah then you know we're not gonna see that as a great pitch um talk to me about championing wow i butchered that word championing black voices in cinema um you know, I, uh, obviously that's very important. Part of our mission is to fund filmmakers regardless of their background. But what are your thoughts on the state of diversity in film? Broad. That's a, that's a lot. So, yeah. Did you see those new Paramount commercial, commercials where they're talking about the mountain of content? There's a mountain of... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a mountain of thoughts about championing the state of uh, black film. I... Uh, I would say it's about trying to, uh, for me, find the stories that are stories that you know black filmmakers are making, and that mm -hmm. there are genuine stories. Because, like, I mean, I don't want to sound harsh or cold again, but when you when you watch a lot of stuff, you can tell. I guess people who are making things that are creatives and artists and are trying to like tell a story using tell who are people that are just telling something that's kind of rote and generic and mm. kind of fits with tonally what they think people would expect and you can feel that and you can tell people that are already creatives and that have done it that are top down re engineering what feels should fit the moment or whatever like mm -hmm. that. So I think you know, for, you know, film fund and whatever organization, you're trying to find those people that are, who want to make that, who want to tell something novel that mm. do want to just, just reveal something about uh, black experience and experience for, you know, any, any group that is just trying to, you know, humanize their story in a way that is from that filmmaker's perspective and doesn't really just fits some tropey things that people are expecting mm. to 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 get right yeah. now so i mean i feel like that's my approach mm. well i mean it I sounds like what you're saying is it's important to be genuine and tell 
a real story that gets something yeah but also like for the filmmaker perspective as well because it's like you can especially with documentary i mean it happens as 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 well in uh in narrative but it's like well here's two examples right you have a a documentary film that's great but it's like you know it's by like a esteemed not even a white filmmaker let's say it's by a filmmaker and this is taking race outside of it that's foreign and you're getting you know your national government is funding uh you to come to america and find this story and then it's like oh great look at these little poor people they're interesting and then it's like <laughs> well maybe it's the most proficient or well-made film and it's great but it's like whose story is that who's telling their story so mm-hmm. it's being mindful of that when you're trying to choose projects and think things and then on the flip side like something recently let's say narrative wise malcolm marie comes out on netflix i it's it's just honestly as a film it's more of a representation of uh industrial gumption we're going to make a project during mm-hmm. quarantine and we're going to fund all our crew and we're going to do it sam levinson wants to work with zendaya again and do something even though things are shut down cute great fun but it's like all right this is really just like a, a, a sam written story and now it has two back leads okay it's cool mm-hmm. i mean it's cool it's cool it's fine but it's not really a story that's going to really champion you know any sort of thoughtful, creative outlet from uh, a black person or a person of anything. So I think mm-hmm. that it's a really about the mind behind it, the the writer, the writing. Um, I hope I hope that wasn't a ramble. No, no, this is great. I mean, it is a ramble, but it's a ramble in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there. It's yeah, yeah. Meandering, but... um, no, I mean that's great, and I think it it is about the writing, and that's why we ask for written pitches as opposed to we we experimented with video submissions a few years ago i think we got one um some guy tried to give his entire like pitch in like kind of like the super sped up speech you hear at the end of a like radio commercial with all the disclaimers oh yeah he's like i gotta get this because it was like a 30 second time limit and he tried to get everything in but um that was a little sidebar, but yeah, the writing is, is important and that's what we, we care about. We care about that conflict and that premise and, you know, is, is this project actually something that has meat to it? Cause we'll see sometimes entries that say like, Oh, we have so-and-so name actor, or we have this actor, you know, black or not, whatever the, the project is. But I think it's kind of related to that. You said like, oh, this project has two black leads. Sometimes the pitches will mention, you know, like I won't use the exact example, but, you know, XYZ actor is attached or this distributor is interested. And like, that's not, that's great. And that's awesome. And maybe that could help further your project a bit because it shows that it has some legs. But at the end of the day, we're interested in the core of the story, not, you know, really who what name you can attach to it. I think that's really important. And uh, I mean, I don't want to be presumptive, Tom, but like, you know, if you put that in your pitch, it's like, why do you, why do you, do you need that? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So-and-so. <laughs> <laughs> if you have, yeah, this right. is a made up name. The producer actor. Yeah. Right? If you have Will Ferrell in your film, why are you submitting to the film fund in the first place? <laughs> no, I don't know. Good question. Um, What advice would you give to, filmmakers wow bro i feel like i gave a lot of gems that's something you did nice. you we uh, have we are in a quarry right now um, <laughs> that's great we got you know cubic zirconiums and emeralds all that good <laughs> stuff i my, my advice um make something good and what i mean by that is that if you have a project you're working on and you feel strongly about the way it's going you put the energy and time you know like you know when you're looking you might not let's say you write your sentence and you don't feel strong about it but you're you know your project is good rework it keep figuring out the best way to to explain what your work is because you know if it's a film front or not if it's a quality product idea you're going to be need to be doing that constantly and constantly and constantly until somebody cares or gives gives it that where you put it mm-hmm. on the internet and somebody likes it so you're gonna constantly work on it so be mindful that you're always sharpening and try not to 
you know, wear yourself out if you really do. Because, you know, you can always get worn out or tired or just over a project mm. that may be valid. So if you really feel good about a, a work, keep plugging at it, keep, you know, sharpening the edges. Um, and, you know, make sure that it's quality. and Make sure that you've taken the time. And then for me, I make a couple films. I know my first couple films, like, we're not that good. <laughs> they <Yeah>. weren't. <laughs> I talked about that on the last That's episode. The, the first <laughs> short film I ever did, it is buried on a hard drive somewhere. No one will ever see, see that. It is, it, and that happens. But like, they're still just, important like, to make. No, yes, because you know, like, so next time you're like, oh, that was, I will never do that again. Mm-hmm. I, will, I am trying to finish a short right now that I made. I went to South Africa. Oh, wow. And I was trying to finish a short documentary. I was like, it's going to be short. It's going to be easy. Mm. And I was like, wow, I will never try to produce a, a short in another country that <laughs> barely, like, how do I get my drives? How do I get the, the video files? Mm. Like, oh, you're like, oh, the internet's slow. It'll take like eight to nine days oh to gosh. get this one. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, oh, why did I do that? But those are the type of things that you learn or you realize that impede you or all these sort of things that happen. So mm-hmm. just because you like finish your first thing and you're like, oh, I made it. Some people want to see this. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, but assess, have a genuine assessment. If you need to show it to people like with your family or friends or somebody or people to just be honest with you, fellow filmmakers or you're in a film group, talk to other people. They'll tell you these stories just and, and they'll help you and you, you can maybe speed up your process of acclimating to what you know is best or and that goes for people that are a little more seasoned as well. Like there's always little gems you get from your community and what you learn. So yeah, absolutely. Keep, I mean, stay, I, stay consistent. I definitely am a huge fan of sharing your films, even if they're, you know, they're one of your first films or if they're your 50th film. I think there's always constructive feedback to be gleaned from the community. Um, and the Film Fund is a big believer in sharing work, whether it's, you know, something super polished that you had a $20,000 budget for, or if you made it in your mom's basement, you can go to the filmfund.co slash auteurs. That's A U T E U R S and submit your work and we will feature it on our community because i just think it's so important for film to be watched um you know whether right. whether it's going to go anywhere or not um sharing that with the community is important you can if you're an entrant and a member of our community you can also share it on the discord server um you know there are a bunch of channels there people post their work all the time so hey what do you think they get constructive feedback um and i think that's just such an important part of it too because you need to put your work out there and i think as you continue to create things, you get a sense of what is good. Like, am I making, is, do I believe in this project? Like you were saying, is this, is this good or is this something I'm tired of? And I think showing that to people and really seeing how they react to your work really helps you hone that internal confidence really when you're creating something. What, um, what do you have in plan for the future? Might be a little hard to say with the pandemic, but future what's that (laughs) all right a hellscape i don't i don't (laughs) i don't know man i mean what do you mean anything festival programming you your own projects what are you having for dinner (laughs) yeah you know what am i having dinner i I made musica so it's great you made what uh musica oh that sounds good yeah yeah the greek pie thing i uh oh that's like the eggplant thing right yeah, eggplant and ground beef oh right. that sounds good but in terms of film uh i am like i was saying i was trying to finish up that short so hopefully that gets the next few tools this year that aren't related to mine because it's just weird conflicts of interest when you're a uh, festival program mm-hmm. you're like well i can't do all these places but that's fine right um hopefully seeing a lot of amazing films it's been a little i feel like the the, the, the hit that production took over the past year it's really just made like it be sort of a grab bag of stuff people have sent out and it's mm-hmm. just been really interesting hopefully there's like some really cool gems that pop up that i feel like it's been difficult this year so mm-hmm. have you seen any any submissions yet from the festivals or is that process not really started yet for you no i mean i have i've started especially for brooklyn um and tribeca as well um uh you know there's always the well-produced money and stuff but sometimes mm. it's like oh wow this guy just made something really cool and i feel like that's been really hampered by covid which kind of sucks yeah uh, that is good so to know though i mean covid aside yeah that the you know the kevin smiths of the world that is still possible 
you know, say I submit something to Tribeca, it's going to be watched. And even if I shot it with a very low budget, I, I, I will tell the world this. You make something, somebody is watching it, it's getting the eyes are getting on it. Mm -hmm. Um, so please don't hurt, hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> I, have you ever seen that, uh, documentary official rejection? No, no, I watched it a, a few years ago, more than a few years ago, but it's about this guy who, you know, pours his heart and soul into his film and he submits it to a bunch of major festivals and gets rejected and then kind of does like an expose on the film festival world and says how it's all, you know, mini majors submitting their work and you know, Kevin Smith's in it. And he says like, yeah, if I made clerks today, I don't know if it would get into Sundance. And, um, it's a very jaded kind of view of the film festival world. I mean, so. I mean, I mean, we could pull back the veil a little bit. I mean, like I, it's, it's always, there's always that dynamic between f like full fledged production companies mm -hmm. and the money and all that stuff. And the you know, grant sphere and, huge big huge grants and the sun dances and how they fund like yeah that thing exists mm -hmm. um and movies cost money to make yep so that that is a dynamic but in terms like we always go back to story there's stories that that especially in documentary especially in documentary it's a lot harder to do it in features because of just the amount of money is needed you the support is helpful mm -hmm. but in documentary you find a really great story then it's yours and a lot of the time the money is come till later like let's oh so, so and so this is on netflix but yeah they they shot 90 percent of that then they got a grant at the end to right. get an editor you know like mm -hmm. that's a lot of that is what happens so you know, it's easy to be jaded, but it's 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 a process. Yeah, it's a process I, on both sides. I think the sound bite there is there is someone out there watching your work when you submit it. There is because that's so important. Because <laughs> so many people worry about that. There are articles. It's like how to track your film and Vimeo to make sure that the festivals are actually watching it. And you know, it's it's good to know that at least the festivals you're involved with, you're actually watching the films. Yes. <laughs> Brandon, I want to thank you so much for taking some time to speak with us today. Just a reminder, we have our current contests open. Uh, let me pull up the deadline because I am blanking on it. They close in March. Oh, no, I remember. March 30th. I'm a very on-the-ball CEO 30th. and producer today. <laughs> a lot going on. March 30th, 2021 is the deadline. Get your entries in. Currently open for narrative and documentary submissions. So remember to check the filmfund.co to submit your entry and stay up to date. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the podcast. Remember to check our social channels as well where you can learn about our prizes, such as winning up to $10,000 in cash money for your film, as well as KidSplit gift cards and Adobe Creative Cloud subscriptions. And maybe we'll get a few more prizes as well. If we do, we'll be sure to update you via the email newsletter and social media. You can also check the website regularly for the most up-to-date information. You can also check out our blog at thefilmfund.co slash blog, which is filled with great filmmaking and producing tips. So check that out, sign up for the newsletter, follow us on social to stay up-to-date on what's happening at the Film Fund. Brandon, thank you so much again. Do you have anything Thanks, else to Tom. add before Appreciate we wrap it. up? Uh, everybody, submit. Submit great, great pitches that are well-written and uh, just make stuff, like like Tom was saying. Just don't be, you know, I mean, be safe. Be COVID-appropriate and be safe, but, you know, it's always good to make new, cool stuff. Have a good time. Tell stories. Love it. Thanks so much, Brandon. And, yes, make your sentences good because it makes our job a little bit more fun even if it's difficult when we're judging the sentences. Thanks again for listening. You can tune in every Friday for new episodes, and I will talk to everybody later.